Okay, uh, welcome to today's Spotlight on Blackboard Learn session. I'm uh, very happy today to have um, Dr. Brian Oppie from Psychology, uh, who was one of our Blackboard pilots last semester. So he used Blackboard Learn a little bit before everybody got uh, a chance to get into the system. And um, he's going to be talking today about some of the methods he used to organize his course materials, since that's a very wide open area in Blackboard Learn for our instructors. You might learn something today about the way you want to uh, organize your materials in a way that's easy for your students to access and easy for you to maintain and update. So with that, I'm going to just uh, turn it over to Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Okay, so um, again, I was part of the Blackboard pilot, and I opted in kind of at the last minute to the pilot because I'm one of those people that thinks that if they're going to bring something new on, I might as well use it now rather than wait a semester or so for the bugs to go away. Uh, actually, a very pleasant experience. Had no real trouble with the uh, Blackboard Learn system. Uh, but the first trick, I think, with any of these systems is to figure out just what am I gonna, going to put up there and how am I going to use it? What's it going to look like to the students? So um, I've got two separate uh, logins here. I think this is the student one actually no this is the demo student one so we'll go ahead and take you in and I'll show you what it looks like uh, to a student coming into the class uh, the class that we're looking at is an upper division psychology class it's a perception class I taught it um, in an interteach format which means that approximately um, every other day of class the students would actually collaborate together to work through uh, certain types of problems that we assigned them uh, either with me or with a uh, teaching assistant available to give them a hand, uh, but they're expected to generate stuff while they're in the room as opposed to offline. So we posted quite a bit of stuff for that there. Uh, the basics for the class, I've got a start here area, just something really obvious for the student who says, I don't know where to go. Start off with start here, and it gives them a nice simple target. Um, and I just had a couple of things here, and this is uh, my welcome screen. It uh, tells them what course this is, you know, welcome to the study of human perception. I've got the syllabus uh, linked in that particular location, and then just, uh, what, maybe two demos? A couple of demos that sort of introduce them to the concepts of the course, which, uh, of course, visual illusions are a big part of what goes on in there. Um, now, I know that in the description for this class, it does say that this is a sort of uh, um, an approach to learning modules. I didn't use learning modules in this class. What I did was I stepped into the class, I said, well, what do I want to give to the students and how does it look best? And I began tinkering with the tools. And what I found is that one tool worked very well for me and that was simply to create things um, as items as opposed to working with anything else. This is what I would call the most um, blunt approach to doing a, a Blackboard Learn course. That is, it's simple, it's straightforward, and I was able to deliver material that made sense to me and then also made sense to my students. So what we've got over here on the left is a menu that indicates all of the different chapters. Um, I built this, I hadn't taught this class in 10 years, I signed it to myself I think about a month before the start of the semester. I never quite figure out why I do this, but I did that. Um, so I started off with chapter one and then I just built sort of week by week as I was going. Sometimes I got a week or two ahead of myself, other times I'd have students say, you know, you haven't posted Thursday's materials. I said, oh, that's right. So it didn't take very long to do so. So uh, that's the structure that we're looking at over here. So if we just take uh, chapter one as our first sort of introduction to it, as you look at this particular one, you'll note that uh, what I've got are just uh, uh, some very simple materials. I created each one of these as an item, and I'll show you real quickly what that looks like from my side of it. But I did this because it was the quickest, the simplest, and the easiest way to get things up there, and then I could move things as I needed to. So if I said, well, I wanna have this one come in this particular order, but I didn't want the relatively rigid structure that I saw from the learning modules. Again, this is very simple and it's very straightforward. So I've attached them. Most of what I attached were in the form of PDFs. I give a description for each item, and that's one of the nice things about using the, uh, uh, the item approach is that you can give a nice full description for it. And there's a handful of items for uh, for every week. So here we added a, a definition that wasn't well integrated in the textbook, but by and large, it was for uh, versions of my slides and then also for things that we called prep guides. And the prep guides are simply uh, two page, two to three page documents that are part of the interteach that I was doing. So these were the things that you'd go off and you'd study as a student. Uh, let's go ahead and go into one of these. There we go. Okay, and again, just a very simple document and everything in here is either PDF or DOCX when it's anything along those lines. Um, 
long instructions on the first day. After the first week, I assume that they remembered some of the stuff that came before. They were to go off, study these things, and then they come together in class to uh, uh, be able to prep these things. Um, I never once during the semester had a student come up to me and say, I can't find the assignment. I can't find the document. I can't download it, which I think speaks, uh, I think, pretty well to uh, Blackboard Learn. Uh, being able to do that. So again, this is the student side, this is the student view of it. So if we take a look at it from the instructor side, it'll be pretty similar. So we'll go ahead and jump on down to that chapter one. And so we're looking at the same files here. And again, everything that I have here is instantiated as an item as opposed to as anything else. And let me just go ahead and we'll add, I've got edit mode on, go to build content, tell it that I want to add another item. And this is just a demo for Monday. Okay, something like that. Give a nice simple description as to what's going on here. Okay. You say, do I have an attachment for this one or was it simply a quick note to the students? Usually I'd have an attachment so I can go to the uh, collection here. Go down, find something that I've already uploaded. Um, definitely the wrong chapter, but that's okay. And, oh, take that back. Let's try that again. I think this was the one that I did. Click Submit. Uh, you can specify if you want people to see it or if you're going to hide it from them for a little while. You can specify if you want to track number of views using a simple tool here. You can specify date ranges for when it's going to appear for the students. But by and large, what I was looking for was let them see it right away. Don't worry about date. It's available through the end of the semester if they want to reach it again later on. And that's it. So um, when Laura first said, do you want to come and demo? I was thinking, well, there's a five minute demo for you. Uh, so I'll show you a little bit more about what's going on with this, but that's really all there was to it. Um, yeah. So, so I can think, because I do a couple of things. One, I, I just teach completely face-to-face, -face and I'll use uh, Vista as a kind of a little bit of an interaction to produce information for students. Then I do one that's more, that has a little bit more activity. It's face-to-face, -face, but they need to do a lot online, and then I'm fully online. So this course really is built for a setting where it's supplementary. You, you supplement some of the sessions with information. They go here, they prep it, and they come in and interact with each other or with you as a facilitator. Yes, I would call this supplementary. So every single chapter had some materials that were on there, and the materials varied between uh, just copies of my PowerPoint slides, which I don't do for every class, but this is a very heavily visual class. And uh, I thought it was important to be able to let them see exactly what it looked like there. Uh, so I've got my slides up there. I've got the interteach, which is that little bit, prep this, work on this on your own time, and then you're gonna come together and you'll work with a small group. And that small group was three or four students. They did judge each other, but the idea is that you show up having prepped, but not having answered the questions. Then you turn these things in. Um, we had them turn them in on paper. We could also have arranged something, I'm sure, to work with this particular system. If I was doing this in a, uh, in a, uh, um, an online only class, mm -hmm. I'd still probably structure it much the same way. I'm going to structure around chapters because I'm still very heavily invested in the textbook for a course of this sort, very heavily, what I would call very technical information. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would build um, all the items in in very much the same way. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that does come in handy is this ability to be able to move things around very easily within the Learn system. And those of you who've been working with Vista for quite some time recognize how difficult that was to do in the old system. Uh, we have uh, the same thing, of course, happens right here. I can move things wherever I want them to be. So if I come back up here and we want to add a new item, um, and whoops, give me just a moment. Those uh, that I've got these organized, I think, as subheaders. Sounds right. And you can see how bad my typing is. Did I just type that wrong? I did, didn't I? Let's rename it. I can't handle that. In your um, 
you have your items, can you create um, super headings for those things? So if you want a system that readings, PowerPoint, and then you'd create all your items underneath those. So, you know, yes. Items. So in other words, what you're asking for is just a simple heading item. And that's a good question. I would, again, using the, the blunt trauma approach, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, where mm -hmm. what you've got is a hammer, everything looks right. like a nail. Mm -hmm. You could do it simply as another item with no content within it. Mm -hmm. So you could handle it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and they wouldn't click on anything. They'd see it. Yeah. But let me think about that just for a second. So can I create... That's a really good question. So, in other words, you'd say you yeah, want all of your PowerPoints yeah, under a separate yeah. subheading? No, maybe, I'd, maybe I'd have uh, readings, uh, films, um, PowerPoint, and, you know, I'm thinking about... So, let's go ahead and just try that real quickly. So, this is going to be... throw it in there and we'll just see what it looks like for the yeah. students. So let's go ahead and drop it right underneath that first one. Go over here. And was I in chapter one? Yeah. I think I was. So you could do it that way and then I think under the content for that particular heading, I'm not sure I like the way this looks visually. Actually we can change that view. Yeah, turn the icon off so that it, it doesn't yes. feel like. Exactly. And I believe for turning the headings on and off Peter, do you know off the top of your head? Um, you can just do it for that page. But, you know, it, it probably there's a much easier way to do this by actually using the content of the item area. to You can put in lines, huge text, whatever yeah. you want. Mm -hmm. But you really don't want that many things on a page. If you have okay. so many things on a page that you have to start doing subheadings, yeah. you probably have too many items on a page. Right. You, you don't want, want this to scroll for a mile. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good so, point. Yeah. You know, keeping it simple, mm -hmm. I think, is important. There are You can do folders on these pages mm -hmm. that then have more content items in mm -hmm. there. So much more like Vista than in that way. Yeah, exactly. So there's or that might be the purpose. time to resort to using one of the uh, learning modules instead. Because if you've got if you've got a large collection of headings then subheadings, you might want to go ahead and just embed each one of those. What, yeah, what I saw that uh, that I didn't care very much for were the learning modules where that's what you had as a student. So you had one giant learning module and then you had subsets within it. Mm -hmm. To me, that structure was harder to follow than this structure was. Well, but if I started getting into 12, 15, 20 items, you're right. I think it's going to get too complex here. Or maybe the items could be readings, uh, description, uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if, if um, I don't know if you show it on any of your pages, Brian. But <coughs> it's not one file per item. You could have yeah. ten files so, on yes. one item yeah. labeled so PowerPoint. That, oh, that's an excellent point. I wasn't even thinking along those yeah. lines, but he's yeah. exactly yeah. right. So I can select three files, embed yeah. them there, or yeah. I can have more of them. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so um, just I'm going to glance through and see if there's anything else that jumps out at me with regard to any of these, but it's pretty much going to be what you've already seen. So like I say, this is a relatively short one, and I've got everything from Docs. Sometimes this is an HTML, so this is a link to, uh, um, I think it was a very nice page on some of these things. There we go. And just illustrate some of these things to greater extent. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it's actually it's a little bit uh, a little bit crazy, a little bit overwhelming at the same time. But we talked through these in class as well. Oh, for this is not mine. This is just a link to an external page. This is uh, Michael Bach. So again, from my perspective, it was really easy um, because these things take about ten seconds to instantiate. Um, I'd even experimented with the journal, and again, I just fit everything within that same structure. But uh, the caveat to all of this is that I did this for a couple of reasons, one of which is I was building the class as I went. So this was a week-by-week -week endeavor for me. Uh, the second thing is this is a solution that I found that I liked the simplicity of it. Um, I liked the quickness of it. And again, for the number of materials I've got on here, I think it gives me a relatively clean look. One of the concerns that somebody voiced when we first were talking about this early in the semester was, well, gee, if you've got all of your chapters in there, aren't you going to be overwhelmed by the length of the menu? And as far as I can tell, that didn't really happen in this case. 
Um, but if I was going to go further, Peter's uh, dead on. I think the right, uh, the right approach to this would be to go back and simply say, okay, for each one of these headers then, or each one of these items, they're going to have several files that will be embedded within them. And that would be the simplest way if you want to follow, again, this, what I see is a relatively uh, boneheaded approach. But that apparently fits me fairly well. <laughs> Let's see, uh, questions or comments? Like I say, this is a relatively brief one. Yeah, Anne. Um, I don't think you're both headed at all. And secondly, <laughs> uh, the thing that was important that you did is you contextualized the chapters. Yes. A uh, common mistake made by beginners is just to call it chapter 15, chapter 14, or to say week one, week two, and most people have no clue what week we're in when we're right. hot and heavy in the middle of a semester. So if you contextualize it with the topic, along with the number, that's a nice job. Absolutely. Uh, this does point out the one tiny little glitch, and I've mentioned this one before, and I don't know if any of you see what happened to me, is I created that demo day um, link, and I put it underneath chapter one, but it moved itself. And this has been one of the things that I've dealt with uh, all semester long. Uh, the stuff just moves themselves around? Yes. Interesting. So if I want it actually right below chapter one, I'm gonna drop it down below student resources, and then I'm just going to go off and do something else. And with a little bit of luck, ah, oh. now it's where I want it to be. So you drop it one link lower than where you want it to be. Does anybody know why that happens? Has anybody else complained about it, Scott, or is it just me? I've not seen anybody complain about it. I thought I saw it in my class, but then it went back down, so I wasn't sure if I really saw that. Happens on, <laughs> on every browser. Happens, happens on every browser, browser I've tried. Uh -huh. So it's fixed in Service Pack 8. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be fixed right off the bat. Um, Okay, again, I think that that uh, pretty much catches everything with regard to the class. The other things that I used in my course, of course, were uh, um, announcements. I used the grade book um, extensively. Uh, given that I've got student names in there, I probably shouldn't be... Is it... You can show it. I'll blur them out. Okay. So if we go into the grade book... Whoops. What am I doing here? Grade center and full grade center. This is probably going to look like a little bit too much, but go ahead and jump down to there. Um, so I used it actually very um, extensively. Um, I've got interteach scores in here. I've got in-class quizzes that I uh, uh, used clickers for, as well as using clickers for just basic questions that were embedded throughout. So all the quizzes are clicker-based quizzes in class. Uh, anything that just says click and then a date, that was uh, the clicker scores for that particular date. And uh, those are not contextualized in any way. So um, if I was going to correct this, I'd probably step back and say clickers from, and I'd probably specify the, uh, uh, the title for it, just sort of in retrospect as I'm looking at it uh, right here. Um, proportion correct is what we're looking at for each one of those things. Uh, had 12 dozen, maybe even as many as uh, 20 or 25 across the semester. And then I just drop a couple for the students. We had a discussion a little bit earlier that uh, if there's time after we're all done here. If somebody wants to see what I did to get the clicker scores up, I might be able to demo it on this machine. But given that I don't have clicker scores and I may not remember my login information for uh, um, response where I may have some issues there. But I can show you what I tried to do with it. Uh, so again, very extensive. What we found though is that the uh, gradebook worked very well. Um, I had my TA put in an approximation of their points and their grade in the last week of the semester, told the students that this is just tentative, that there's going to be some adjustments that came afterwards. What amazed me, though, is that uh, she sat down. It took her perhaps 10 minutes to come up with uh, the formula that counted all the columns it's supposed to, dropped the lowest scores, did all of that sort of thing, and came up with an approximation that you'll see actually looks pretty darn close to where their final scores came up. That is, everybody got bumped a little bit because I had her go conservative on those scores. Um, but uh, again, very powerful uh, uh, gradebook built into this system as well. So, so you found that great that you were able to like deduct more than one quiz because under Vista you could only do one. So this you could drop two or however many you want. Again, again I, I had, had my, my TA set this, this particular, particular one up, but, but it, it appears to have worked just fine. fine. You could drop the two highest or the two lowest. Or... <laughs> <laughs> and Scott will know because he's doing a spotlight session on the grade center. Ah. So that's probably enough then on the Great Center. Any other questions or comments? Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.